Hi, happy start of the week and welcome back to the Love in Dubai show where we go through the top trending stories that everyone across the week, across the country is talking about. The country is recovering from what felt like the biggest climatic disaster of our time. 100%. Our top story for you today is uh, Sheikh Hamdan approves emergency weather aid. As well, Dubai pet daycares extend free boarding services for dogs. We're talking about the Emirates apology as they uh, apologized with an open letter to customers after the storm disruption. As well, Casey has a beautiful love and loves Ignite water sports for us today. And also we're going to talk to the Egyptian Ferrari driver, Mohamed Hamdi, who rescued an elderly man from drowning in the Dubai floods. And then finally, you had a pretty cool interview last week. Yes, I had a very nice talk with the iconic R&B sensations, boys to men, who shared their story of how the band has begun. Uh, but before we get to all of that, a post that we've just taken live on our feed this morning, rain expected from Monday to Friday. This is an NCM government report. We just wanted to jump into it quickly because I don't know about you, but every single person I spoke to this weekend about the weather, about how it affected them, about the damage, the question they had was, so what's happening on Tuesday? What's happening on Wednesday? Is it coming? So we do have the answers for this. I hope not. I really hope not. I mean, at this point, you know, the, uh, I was talking, talking to Mahira because she lives in the same area that I do. And both of us, we were kind of like stuck. It was like being stuck. It felt like COVID. I went, I wanted to use the metro and the metro was like closed. And I was like, it's fine, Farah, take a deep breath. It's fine, it's fine. But yeah, I hope not. I really well, know. yeah. good news on that front. Okay. There is <laughs> rain coming, but it's expected to be light. So light to moderate rains over some regions of the country. So this is an NCM government report. It's not de- directly related to Dubai. It's directed to the country as a whole. Um, so on Monday, there's a light chance of rain on Tuesday again, which is interesting because last week it was reported that we'd have heavy rains on Tuesday evening. Here it says on Tuesday, the potential for rain increases with light to moderate showers expected, particularly over eastern areas of the country so we will see rain the only concern is if it hits areas that are still flood damaged because we know the majority of uh, Dubai is moving we thank the services for making that happen Um, a lot of the roads are back up and running but some are still affected so we just don't want to see a heavy rainfall in areas where Uh, are still affected from last Tuesday's I mean, uh, storm. I mean, 100%, 100%, 100%, because like, yes, um, it rained, but it was, it was storm at this point. It was like, it was, the, 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 the roads were flooded, everything was uh, kind of like messed up. I've seen even trees fall down, and I'm like, oh my God, it was that actually much of a big deal. So, you know, I'm just like hoping it's actually light. I'm going to accept that. According to the light. government report, it is light uh, to um, light, medium. It's, it's a weak weather potential for the next week in, in different parts of the country. So we're not expecting anything to the scale of last week. Um, so there's 100%. no concern there on that front. Yeah, and by the way as well, like shout out to Dubai police because like they have managed to... Yeah, maybe, maybe I was kind of like locked out for like a few days, but they managed to, you know, get back, you know, on track in like three days, maybe four or five, but like still, you know, like they were able to clear a lot of the roads, which is a very good thing. Mm. Speaking of getting back on track, a big announcement came through yesterday, which is big news for people who've been affected. So Sheikh Hamdan approves emergency weather aids. Now, in light of the severe weather conditions over the past week, and as many houses have been affected, His, high, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of Dubai Executive Council, approved a series of initiatives to help those affected by severe weather, severe weather in Dubai, following a meeting with heads of government entities. The Crown Prince told a team to quickly check all requests from Emirati citizens hit by heavy rain. They're focusing on fixing and rebuilding homes for those affected. Also, Sheikh Hamdan asked the Dubai Land Department and RIRA, which is the Real Estate Regulatory Agency, to work with property developers to help communities they manage to get back to normal as quickly as possible. He as well promised that Dubai is determined to help everyone affected by bad weather. And he's keeping an eye on things himself. He made it clear that teams on the ground will give good support to both citizens and residents, which we've seen actually happen Uh, they have helped a lot and whether it's like even small businesses helping, it's just like I would say thank you, thank you Dubai. 
True, we've seen some homes and businesses so affected by this. Um, speaking to a couple of people over the weekend, people still without electricity, living on high floors of apartments. So I think we just have to uh, acknowledge that it's not good. It's, it's not a day or two that these things will be cleared up. It's going to take a little bit longer, particularly for those people affected in um living in those most uh, poorly affected areas. Um, But what we've seen over the weekend, as you said, businesses coming out to announce their support and also now the government is uh, jumping in to announce its support. Um, We're hoping that insurance will get back to people. There's something I thought of this weekend. I need to fact check it before I say it, but it it could be good news on the insurance front. Um, But it's great to see the government stepping in at this point uh, to announce that support. And we just uh, will hope it will get to the people that sorely need it. It will for sure get to the people we know. But what I think, I think we've mentioned it on the show earlier when it was via Zoom, as I was doing it via at at my house, um, is that they have... cleared the big roads initially before anything else you know and then of course you know it will get you know takes to, time it will take time you know yeah. what i mean i mean we've seen the storm and it's like it it was like one of the biggest storms as, we, as we've said since 1949 so um they have pulled through you know they've managed a lot of damage control in three four days you know but maybe not all of it but it will Get the time. It, will take the, it, it just will get takes there, yeah, time. And sure. I think speak to every single person uh, in Dubai, particularly, no one will come to you without yes. a flood or a storm story this yes. weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a challenging time for all of us, yes. trying time for all of us. I, I thank my lucky stars that my home was flood free and my office was flood free. But, you know, seeing the le- scale of damage, and you're right, it is going to take time. Hundred um, percent. And know, as you course. said, we have to take a deep breath in we some should, situations. We should. You know, but because I think you know, when you live, uh, we we live uh, like people who live in Dubai, you know, or like I'm born in Dubai, so I'm, I've never been. I'm not. I'm not used to Dubai being. I don't know under like destruction. In any in any shape or, or, or form, you know what I mean. I'm just like used to Dubai being all the time perfect. I have access to everything. Fine, COVID happened. We lost access, but that was worldwide. But when it happened, when the storm happened to Dubai and the roads were closed, I was like, "What do you mean, Dubai? I can't move out of my area. Like, okay, can someone explain this? I need an explanation." And we went. I went. I almost went crazy. This is the thing, though. I think so many people. I think it's, you know, when. you see traffic in other countries, Mm -hmm. that's just it. There's traffic there. When there's traffic in Dubai, people (laughs) complain. They don't accept it. They don't accept it. But the the country is always working on improving Mm -hmm. lives for residents. So I think um, when this happened, it was nearly as though, okay, next day, back to work, all will be fine. But it wasn't the case. Like the level of destruction caused by Mother Nature And climate, and that's a whole other topic. 100%. Um, is something yes. that we can't just expect the city, like, like the level of preparedness, which we're going to jump into Emirates and how they responded. Uh, you know, this is something we've never seen. You said it was back since 1949, but in fact, it's the largest ever uh, rainfall recorded in its climatic history. So mm-hmm. since they started taking note of the weather, this is the largest that's ever happened. That's so true. to it, like, we have to take a breather for the authorities and just respect the fact that no one has ever seen something on the scale. Mm-hmm. The reality is we didn't expect it. We had announcements to work from home for the government. We had schools working from home. But we've had, you know, pre, pre other rainfalls, we've had media briefings at 5 p.m. Yeah. the day before. I don't know the level of expectations for this, but I think it's, it, we all have to take a deep breath in terms of getting back to normal and expect that everyone's working as hard as they can. It just takes a little bit longer. At the same time, I sorely empathize with people whose homes have been ruined and who don't have electricity and who don't have access to food. Uh, You do see people like Kipsons, different supermarkets going out of their way to get food to people who need it. Uh, So if you are in one of those homes and you're watching right now, uh, a pack of food is a small thing, but it may actually mean a lot to you. And there are... um, support groups out there to help you at this point. So just to be aware of that. 100%. And nothing, by the way, um, there is a misconception like, oh my God, this is cloud seeding. I've mentioned before, it's not. It's so. not. So. Uh, let's jump into our next story. Emirates apologized an open letter to customers after the storm disruptions. So the CEO of Emirates, Sir Tim Clark, issued an open letter to customers this weekend, acknowledging that this week has been one of the toughest 
for Emirates operationally yet. He described the length and breadth of the crisis, the scale of the disruption and acknowledged that there are ways Emirates can improve. He as well said, we take our commitment to our customers very seriously and we have taken learnings from the last few days to make things right and improve our processes. And while some accepted the apology, others disgruntled, still seeking loss luggage, are expressing frustration in the comments. Um, and in doing so, Emirates is actually jumping into the comments and giving them solutions, which I think is great to mm-hmm. see. Community management and responding to your public this time is so important. I just, I feel, I, there's no <laughs> right answer yeah. because cabin crew, airport operations teams, could not get to work. I know that they, they yes. tried their best, and in some cases, like your sister, that they did. But operations were going to be slow because the operations team couldn't get there. And then you had people expecting to travel, but the teams weren't there to manage it. And how can you even, I just like, (laughs) this is why I don't work in operations. (laughs) Even if you have, you can't, unless you've got a massive bulk of staff living at the airport, Then how could this have been done better? Like, I know there's a lot of people complaining, like, especially if you have medication in your bags and Mm -hmm. you're traveling with elder people, you're traveling with children. This was amid a horrifying, really difficult situation to deal with. Yeah. But at the same time, how, I don't, I don't know, but like, this is why I don't work in crisis management, but yeah. how could it be better? <laughs> you know, the thing is, I don't know how it could be better, but I think, you know, like in times of crisis, as an individual, it's very hard to um, empathize with people who work, as you have mentioned, in operations and things like that, because like all that you can think of is yourself. You know, all of that you can think of it's oh my god, my things are lost. Um, there are very important medication that is packed, and so on and on. And God knows what you know issues that they have. My my bag is lost. I can't find my bag, and all these things. It's hard to think like oh my god, yeah. But it took so long for the cabin crew to reach. It took so long for the team to to handle uh, to to get to work to do their job that they are meant. to do. And I've seen, by the way, several videos on TikTok uh, where cabin crew were really struggling to actually pass uh, to the airport and to get to their job because like the buses are not, we were, they, they were not there, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, you know, they go through uh, accommodation and so on. And I, I, I mean, I have seen the floods. The floods were insane around the airport because I live nearby. And uh, in Garhoud, technically, uh, as I've mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, Mahir as well lived in Garhoud. And it was like, it was insane. It was it was not even like the normal, I would say, uh, flood, uh, because maybe we live closer to Sharjah. You know, Garhoud's closer to Sharjah. And it was a lot. And I've, I've showed you, you know, like the video of cabin crew, you know, like, walking with their shoes in the floods and someone like having like things on their head because it's raining and the thunder was there as well. So um, I feel like, you know, maybe we should um, just like maybe take into... Take a deep breath. Ta- ta- <laughs> exactly, take a deep breath and maybe just like feel you know, like because like they are as well stuck, just like how you are stuck, you know, they're stuck in their own way. Mm. We're all stuck. Everyone, they're just like in a, on a different, I would say, font. <laughs> I, but I think that... lessons will be learned, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but interesting to see uh, a lot of response. So um, someone saying to all those spreading hate, ever heard of a little thing called a natural disaster? Yeah, you know, um, uh, someone said not acceptable. This is simply, uh, this is not simple. You don't have staff to rebook for passengers. Um, someone said we learn, we implement, we get better. It's something beyond our control. It's a natural storm and nothing ever Uh, we have never seen anything like this and we will learn from it. I'm sure that the UAE, true. Emirates and everyone here is taking what happened as a valuable lesson. And that's, uh, I think that's from Nashit on Instagram. And that's kind of where I stand on it, that mm-hmm. it wasn't ideal for anyone. In fact, to go further than that, it was a difficult situation for a lot of people, but it was never seen before. And, you know, Emirates is one of the is the top airline in the world. Like we love that's getting true. on an Emirates one flight, and, um, and you know we know that they'll learn from this for sure. I think honestly, the best thing that they could have done is cancel all flights. You know, because like it's it wouldn't be fair for the crew or the pilot or anyone working to get through to do their job while it's like. Where, what, like the, what, I mean, literally, I saw a TikTok as well of uh, Emirates Cabin Crew. She was like, I missed my E-gate. 
And now I'm counted as absent when I couldn't find a taxi because taxis mm. were not there. I couldn't go by metro and the bus couldn't come to her. It's like, fine, like, if she ha- like, none of the options worked for her to get to work. So how is it her fault that the, na- the natural disaster happened True. and she couldn't get to work? And now she is counted as absent and she has like a black point. How is that fair? Yeah, um, I'm not sure about like the inner workings of Emirates and that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was like a logistical thing, and maybe they'll be yeah. able to change that post. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, I'm I just hope looking so. at the comments. You know, people at the airports a long time, but uh, now we know. I think there's still some luggage at the airport. Yeah. We know that for sure. Um, getting, but operations are back up and running, um, and the airlines are back up and running. Um, so uh, at least at this point, people are able mm-hmm. to get where they need to be. Um, we're going to jump into our next story. This is quite a nice one uh, for dogs affected by the story. This is actually very cute and very close to my heart because I love pets. So Dubai Pet Daycares extend free boarding services for dogs affected by rain damage. You know, it's easy to overlook the well-being of our furry companions. While heartwarming videos of kittens being rescued circulated, it's essential to remember that many pets were also affected by the adverse weather con- conditions. Fortunately, uh, several uh, pet daycares have stepped up to offer assistance and support to pets in need as well. Like, for example, Petsville is offering dog owners free boarding in their DIP branch until, you know, the homes are fixed. That's really sweet. Brownie Pet Shop would also like to help out the families by offering complimentary boarding for dogs, birds and fish. As well, Mike's Veterinary Clinic is offering free consultations for stray cats that were affected by the storm. This is really amazing. Um, Spot Daycare Center is also welcoming dogs whose homes have been impacted. They're offering free daycare and boarding. So if you're sitting at home uh, and you've got kids and an animal and you're not sure, I think it's such an amazing act for uh, the doggy daycare centers to be stepping up and saying, look, we've got space. You've seen this across the board. Some people are talking about hotel Um, prices going up, which mm-hmm. did happen in some cases. In other cases, we're seeing deals on hotels being offered for seven-day deals to get people in. So it's a mixed bag of how people It are is, responding. Yeah. But I think humanity has run one out in this case in terms of community jumping in, stepping in. I know there's a lot of WhatsApp groups um, of people just being like, look, we can help. Where are yeah. you? Let us know. I've got a big car. Um, what do you need? Can we get food to you? Uh, so if you are sitting at home and you're looking for support, I would you know, even message us now and we'll see if, uh, if we can connect you with the right people. I think that's the most important thing. Um, we've been putting stories up throughout the weekend of people needing help here and here. Maybe you haven't heard from the developers yet, but you might want to get a grocery delivered to you. And I know that the, mm-hmm. uh, the grocery stores, the teams are going above and beyond uh, to get foods and their teams are working. You know, their teams are working. They've been 100%. affected by the flood that's as true. well. Um, so we all just have to take a bre- breathe and understand that it's not an, an easy time. And if you can help, help. That's true. And you know what, actually, I would like to point out something uh, is that, you know, yes, the storm has happened. Yes, it has caused a lot of damage. That is true. But why are we not looking at the positive aspect of it? Because like it has shown us that, you know what, humanity is still there. It has shown us that people will stand for people in terms of need. It has shown us a lot of positive things. So it's just because, like, I don't know, it's like, why, why are we looking at the negative aspect of it? You know, like I've seen this video of like the uh, kitten, you know, like grasping on the car. And, you know, the uh, Dubai police helping the kitten. I was like, that is the most heartwarming video, video ever. It is, it is. I mean, I, because I, I don't know, I love animals and I just like, it, I feel like it's very um, cute how they are actually uh, handling it, you know, as well, like a lot of uh, dogs from shelter, sh- uh, shelter were being transported to somewhere else because like the shelter was flooded. So it's just like cute initiatives that are around there. Um, Very quickly, uh, let's jump into Love and Love. So this is a segment we do every week um, and it's to highlight all of uh, the things that Farah and I basically check out at the weekend that we enjoy doing. Uh, So this one is Ignite Water Sports and I want to talk about it because I go quite regularly. It's down at the Palm. Uh, It's a water sports um, beach shack, I guess, Mm -hmm. and they've got kayaking, they've got paddle boarding, they've got yoga, they've got ice baths and they've got like fun kids clubs and However, I went down yesterday and uh, speaking to the guy there that runs the place and his experience. So could you imagine his business 
is located on the beach and he has his entire he's got all the paddle boards all the kayaks everything there and he's got a water park set out in the front floods coming in on Tuesday what do you do you know you can't he, he told his team to stay at home it's just him and basically his entire operation sitting there he's tying it down he's going back between he's in I think as much as possible we all took shelter but yeah. his uh, the operation is like I guess a wooden beach shack mm-hmm. pretty small <laughs> so he's in there watching the rain uh, and then every time that there was a lit up in the storm he's tying everything down again he oh had concrete God. blocks you know these um big uh, water parks mm-hmm. inflatable water parks in the yeah. water mm-hmm. so they have one there and it's tied down by concrete blocks in the sea and you imagine because this is the sea and the yeah. waves coming in they've got to be heavy blocks that was moved the force oh of the water God. moved that along the beach luckily uh, it didn't harm anyone it didn't go too far um, but One, just a shout out to Ignite Water Sports. I go down to paddle, um, like paddle boarding. A lot yeah. of weekends you uh, paddle and then you can like have a look in at all the, the nice houses on the palm. You get close. That's fun. Oh. Um, but also just a shout out because <laughs> small business, time of crisis, and the business owner had no option but to be there literally against the storms, tying down his, his products, um, you know, keeping the kayaks in. And it's just... Uh, A scary situation um but went down there at the weekend all back up and running uh, so if you'd like to support a local business uh, ignite water sports started um right before the pandemic actually and uh they do great water um mm-hmm. like water activities for kids they've got birthdays every weekend it's just a really nice like yeah. fun thing have you been paddle boarding here yes actually i have and i tried to like stand on this surfboard but i couldn't I just like immediately phew. No way. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm like, it's really fun. It's really nice. But you know what? I love water sports. I enjoy them so much because like you can get like a glimpse of like both, like uh, like the experience of the beach while practicing a sport that is very fun. Mm. I like it. I yeah, really do. It's super cool. Yeah. But paddle boarding was not for me. I mean, I at the end of the day, I would just like maybe lay down on the, on, on, on the paddle board and I'd be like, Oh, it depends on the day. Like someday we'll go out to another beach and have a sit down. Another day, so yeah. just lying at a time. Yeah. It's all good. Um, 9.54, this brings us to our guest. Mohammed Hamdi uh, was, like the rest of us, affected by the storm. However, he jumped in and rescued someone from a car. We're going to get his story after this very short break. So stay tuned. Hmm. Hmm.
welcome back to the Love in Dubai show. This man's move to rescue an elderly man from drowning in his car during the Dubai storm is nothing short of heroic. He also happens to be a member of the Egyptian Ferrari team. Yes, he is. Welcome to the show, Mohamed Hamdi. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're excited well, to have you. you. Yeah, I am. I'm very excited because like, it has been, you know, like, I would say insane over the past weeks. But I would yes. like to ask you if you can just like your heroic act has gone viral all over social media. If you can tell us what happened and how it happened and give us just like a bit of detail. All right. So uh, basically I was taking my family home to the airport and uh, dropped them off and going back home. Um, I had a I had a, a big car. It was a Nissan Patrol. And uh, this car actually really saved me that day. And I was passing through a um, huge, huge pile of water like everyone else did. And I saw a man. Who, uh, his name is Abdul Rasul, and he was just stuck in his car, and uh, he was frightened and a little bit shocked and a little bit uh, imposed. He was just paused, like the water was was inside his car, and he was just sitting there in his car. Everyone was passing next to him, and I was like, "I've got to do something about it. Why isn't why isn't anyone stopping?" And so I just I parked my car, I walked to the other side of the road, and I was like, "Hey, hey, hey, what's up?" What? You're just going to stand and sit in the car? What's up? And he was like, he, he didn't even reply. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Uh, I started walking uh, in the water and um, going going inside, going inside. And I'm like, uh, you speak English, you speak Arabic, you spoke Arabic. And I'm like, come down, come down, come down. And uh, he was he was still shocked. So I'm like, okay. So I started walking more inside to the car. And then when, when I was just like one meter away from the car, he decided to come down from the car. So um, he was shaking, and I was like, "What's up, man? Why, why, why are you just in your car?" And he he was just in a state of shock, and that's and I've realized that uh, this is very dangerous. So when you're in a state of shock and you don't um, act, you can just die by because you just don't act. So um, yeah, I I got him. We we walked. Maybe he was just afraid because the water uh, was overwhelming and he didn't know where he was walking. It was just a normal road covered with water. The water was, was dirty, so it wasn't clear where he was walking, but it was just the road that he was just driving through like 10 minutes ago. We walked, we walked, we walked, and he was walking, uh, shaking and very scared. And I was like, don't worry, don't worry, okay, you're with me now, okay, no problem. And then the first thing he asked about was his car, um, because he, he was a driver on the car, and he was like, the company is going to make me a problem. I'm like, man, the company is not going to make you a problem. I have all the videos, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you now, and then we're going to show them everything. And he was like, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we walked to the car, I opened the door, and I'm like, get in. He's like, I'm wet, I can't get in your car. I'm like, <laughs> come on, <laughs> get inside the car, don't worry about it. He, he got inside the car, he didn't speak for like 10 minutes. And after that, after 10 minutes, suddenly he just took a cigarette out and he started smoking. I'm like, okay, he's back. <laughs> And uh, so everything, everything got wet in his car. He lost his phone, everything, but his cigarette pack made it. Ah. <laughs> he started smoking, and I'm like, okay, so where do you work? He worked in a restaurant. We navigated uh, through the water with the car and took him to the restaurant. And then I went to his boss, and I'm like, this man was in this car. And he was like, whoa, thank you very much for saving him. And uh, they gave me food, and I'm like, don't worry about it, it's cool. And he was, he was happy because... Now no one's going to do anything bad to him. And uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience. Like the, this, this story that I just said in five minutes took like three, four hours. So um, it, was, it was a very interesting experience. And uh, I'm happy that I was put in that position. And uh, I would urge everyone who would be put in that posi- position to act uh, accordingly and not be afraid and not be in a state of shock and, uh, and just um, like rub it off. and just march. Go and you will be able to do something. So interesting, because before the show, we were talking about fight or flight mode for a different reason, actually. We were talking about uh, you as a driver. But in that moment, people were driving by, as you said. But you went into fight or flight mode, and you went into fight mode. Why did you stop the car? Uh, I stopped the car because it's, uh, it's, it's... I had to. It's a, he's a human being, and he's just stuck in the car. And I've seen like a big question mark on his face, and everyone was passing. And I'm like, I think I can do something about it. You know, I'm not. I'm not just gonna pass. And I just dropped off my family. I'm going home. I have nothing to do. So thank God I was free. 
And uh, even if I wasn't free, I would have I would have stopped the car. And um, I, I don't know, Yanni. I'm, I I wasn't afraid of just walking in the water. It wasn't. It's just something psychologically that you have to get over. It's just a pavement full of water. Mm. You're just walking on a street that was just flooded, and the, the water is a bit dirty, as I said. So you just have to remove that from your from your mind, and it's just like a swimming pool, normal swimming. There are no sharks. There are no not. There is no electricity because he was alive. So it was all cool. Um, yeah. Was the water inside his car as well? Yeah. Wow. The water was, he was sitting and the water was until, he, until his belly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is terrific. I mean, we've got water to our car, but it was not here. So I can't imagine. Because like I was telling Casey is that um, when such situations happen, you know, it's very hard to think of other people and empathize with other people because all that, all that you can think of is like yourself and things that are affecting you as a human. It's like, fine, they're all, everyone's getting affected, but in your head, um, you're often just like too focused on how it has affected you and how you can get out of it, you know, so you, how can you do damage control? So has the flood affected you in any other ways? In any other ways, mm. yes. I've known that... Uh... Oh my God, uh, things can turn in one second and uh, everything um, that seems you know, everything that seems to be under control can end up not being under control in one second and you have to be prepared. You have to pre be prepared physically, mentally, with your family, with your work, with yourself as a person, with all your life aspects because um, life um, is very good and it's very nice but it can also flip in one second and if you're not ready, uh, something bad, you know, uh, hopefully not, might happen. I'm just thinking, you told us the story, it took three or four hours, but at what time of the day did you find the man? Because those three or four hours in Dubai were probably the scariest in our history in terms yes. of climate. So w what was it like for you trying to help someone, but also dealing with that? And then, you know, when you got to the business, the fact that they were open is actually quite a surprise as well. Yes, yeah. The, the, restaurant, the restaurant is in Deira. So um, I, I got to, like, so there was apparently a first wave and was a, there was a second wave. So what I remember is that I dropped him off before the second wave, which started at 6 p.m. So mm -hmm. let's say I dropped him off at 4 and I left the restaurant at 5. So I found him at like 1 or 2 p.m. Next, right next to the airport. Um, thank God I dropped him off before the second wave because the second wave was very, very, very scary. I was in my car alone and uh, I, was, I, I saw my hotel right there and I just couldn't go through because of the amount of water that was on the, on the ground and the people that were stuck and the amount of rain pouring. It was so, it was so scary. It was really, and the sky was very um, dark and gloomy. Yeah. It was, uh, it was not something that anyone um, would like to see. But uh, thank God it was dealt with. Um, everything went smooth after. But uh, yeah, it was like a wake-up call. Wow. Uh, I mean, yeah, because we've all experienced it as well. Um, I would like to ask is that you mentioned that someone needs to be physically and mentally prepared for such crisis. Yeah. And of course, clearly, you were physically and mentally prepared to have the capacity to think like, oh my God, I need to help someone else. You know, because like in that point, if I am in your position, I would be thinking like, oh my God, I just want to reach home safe and I wouldn't think of saving someone else. So would you say the fact that you are actually a fast car driver, a Ferrari car driver, to be more specific, um, because you're all the time in the adrenaline, so on and so, would you say that that kind of like maybe, maybe kind of like mentally um, trained you? To, to be All like right. aware of everything around as well it's it's i think it's a couple of things not just one thing of course first of all me being a, a driver uh, you you're trained to take split second decisions because you're basically driving minimum when i'm driving it's minimum 200 kilometers per hour and that's like your cruising speed that's like your average speed and no. you have to uh, manage through cars you're listening you're talking to someone you're looking at your gauges to fuel tire pressure and uh, how many laps how many turns you're doing a lot of calculations while you're driving fast so that's so that's yeah that's one of the things the other thing is um, when you're in a nice country and when you're in a comforting country country and a loving country and the country that you love a country that you come to a lot with your family and enjoy you um, when you when you feel embraced you you can give back okay when you feel loved you can give love so um, 
so it's like Dubai is like my second country. So it was just it was just as if he was like right next to my house. So I just gave him a hand. That's the second thing. A third thing is my origins as an Egyptian. I think any Egyptian would have done the same. We have this in our blood. Uh, we always manage to just when a time of crisis uh, comes, we just march and uh, we don't look back. <laughs> Amazing. And actually, whenever we speak about Egypt, we have to give a shout out to our sister page, Love in Cairo. They have an yes. amazing team there. And they were so happy to share the story, of course, because, yes. you know, Egyptian and proud. And this is, a, this is a really special story for them to be able to share as well for the heroic action that you took that saved a life. Um, but I have to just before you leave us, I'd love to just get a bit of background. So you drive Ferrari for the Egyptian team. So uh, I, I, dri- I drive uh, fer- Ferrari for, for the name of my country, Egypt, but, but there isn't something called the Ferrari Egyptian team. So okay. basically, I'm the first Egyptian Ferrari driver driving for Ferrari Challenge Europe, okay. which, is, uh, which is a Ferrari challenge by Ferrari. Uh, I started racing when I was 12. I became the Egypt- uh, karting champion of uh, my country, and then I moved to uh, Formula 3 in Bahrain. I've had a pause or a drawback for 10 years uh, because of my father's death and then I came back in 2021 and uh, started the season with uh, Ferrari 23 and looking forward for my 24 season my second season with them they're a great team the car is great and uh, actually they are changing the car um, this year we're going to the 296 we, we were racing the 488 which is a little bit different The other one is a little bit faster and brakes are more improved. So um, shout out to everyone, actually. Love in Cairo, <laughs> in, in, in Dubai, uh, Ferrari, Egypt and everyone. Well, uh, I was telling Casey that, you know what, a lot of people are actually looking at the storm from a negative aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we forget, I feel like the storm has taught every single one of us a lesson. Yeah. What is one lesson you would you say that this storm has taught you that you have not learned before yeah. and that you would like to share with the audience as well? Um, don't think you, you're going to live forever because uh, you're not going to live forever. Yeah. One day, one second, you don't know when, is, when it's going to come and you won't be here. And everyone who was in Dubai on that day saw that with their eyes. It, this is true. And this is something you can't, uh, you can't explain. Yani, if you live it, you live it and you know what you, you've seen. That's true. Very strong. Um, thank you so much, Mahad Hamdi, for thank. giving us your time this morning. We should also probably shout out Nissan Patrol because I feel like... Yes, of course, <laughs> Nissan Patrol. It really, this car really saved my life. Yes, really? and I've said it. I've said it. I've said shout out to Nissan Patrol 1,000 times. This car really saved my life. Yes. We've seen wild videos of all the cars getting stuck yeah. and then patrols just yes. you know, swimming through yes, the yes. woods. That's true. Um, and a beautiful story from something that was so challenging for so many. Um, and I'm sure that driver is forever in your debt. Um, so uh, as we said, your heroic action saved his life. So thank you so much for joining us thank on the show Thank you for having morning. me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And best of luck with the next season. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, next up, uh, Farah got to sit down with Boys to Men. Yes, I caught, guys, I got to sit down with the iconic R&B sensation Boys to Men, who, by the way, shared as well the story of how they began and how it, all, by the, it started all the way from back in high school. And they still are friends and the band is still going on strong. So if you guys would like to listen to their iconic music, that is, uh, they have their own music and they are, they just like did not really follow any you know trends and so on with the pop culture that is happening today so they sat down with me and we talked all about it so don't forget to tune in for the interview and as well they are set to perform on the 28th of april at coca-cola arena so don't forget as well to hurry up and get your tickets to witness it all enjoy the show
It Welcome was... back to the Love in Dubai show. Today's guests are Mo Boys to Men. They'll be performing their iconic hits, including End of the Road and I'll Make Love to You, live at Coca Cola Arena in partnership with Love in Dubai. We are very excited to have them on the show and cannot wait for the concert. Welcome, boys, to, to the show. Happy, have, very glad to have you here. Hello. How What's going? happening, How's Dubai? Going? What's going on? What's going on with y'all? All is going well. Thank you so much for asking. How are things? And I would like to ask you, what are you most looking forward to performing for the Dubai audience? Everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. We're, we're, we're actually just excited to be there. I believe the last time we were there was before the pandemic. And um, uh, we... Uh, you know, we, we were looking forward to coming back and we were, couldn't wait for the world to get back to where it was supposed to be so that we could. And uh, now that the time has come, it's time to bring all of the, the newness, the evolution, the, the vibes, that the, the joy that, you know, we try to exude in our music back to Dubai. And we want everybody to come out and just rock with us because it's going to be literally, it's going to be probably... Uh, a moment filled of time travel, an hour, an hour and something filled of time travel and, and good music. And that's why we, we want to just have the best time ever. And we want everybody to have the best time with us. Well, I have no doubt that it's going to be such an amazing concert and I cannot wait for that. So I would like to ask, you know, how like celebrities at every concert, they for sure have like surprises for fans. Mm -hmm. So would you say can fans expect surprises at your Dubai concert? Um, I think the surprises come with not just what we do, but how the the energy makes us feel. Like there's some could be some things that happen at our shows, and it does where it just brings out something that none of us even expected, not even us that's on stage. So we just try to to create the environment and the atmosphere where surprises can actually happen. Yeah. So that that's that's what it's all about. But just like Wanye said, it, it's going to be a, a show filled with great songs, uh, uh, great uh, presentation, great energy, great energy, and and folks are loving it, and and, and hopefully will appreciate the performance. Yeah, that's amazing. Can't wait. And I would like to go back in time a little bit and ask, how did the group initially form? What inspired the name Boys to Men? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, the group started uh, in high school. We were uh, all vocal majors at uh, high school. I uh, grew up in high school in Philly. And, um, you know, became friends over the years and started singing. And things just kind of led to one one thing led to another. Um, the actual name of the group uh, was supposed to be temporary when we actually put it in. <laughs> um, but we sure as we started were. using it, it, it kind of stuck. The, you know, the meaning of it meant, meant more to us than just a name that was just thrown against the wall. Um, plus, Boys to Men means longevity. Um, it means, you know, it, it's a brotherhood. It's a you know, it's, it's family. It's knowledge. It's learning. It's always figuring out something new all the time. And that's what Boys to Men stands for. And it just happened to stick. So we just, we kept it. And I'm happy you guys like it. Yeah, we, we've been actually doing exactly everything that the name embodies throughout our career. We've been growing every minute, every through the ups and the downs, the the lefts, the rights, the unders and throughs. We just been continuously trying to represent that name, boys to men. I mean, it's beautiful seeing how you guys started out in high school. But can you share some memorable moments from your early days as a group? Ah. Oh. Did you got time? Uh, I mean, it's like, it's, 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 we started in high school. <laughs> yeah, we we have we have we have so many memories, profound ones, and, and not 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 just ones when I guess the world knew us, but when we were in high school and how how we uh, got together and just all the shows that we've done and and the 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 fights, the 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 girls, the you know, like it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot. Like it's it, it's a lot. I mean. It, we'd have to do another interview just based off of those memories, yes, we just were. to kind of list those those things because too many. But yes, we um, but I will say that after thirty two years, it's still fun. We still enjoy it. We still love what we do, and uh, we're creating new memories now. 
Um, being older, we appreciate uh, our position even more, I think so now than we did when we first started um, because we understood how hard it was to maintain the level of success that we've been we've managed to maintain. It's a lot of hills and valleys and all those other things, but we still managed to, to keep it to keep it tight. So um, it's all about the new memories now. It's all about yeah. these new memories and, and creating ones, not just for us, but for our loved ones and, and all of that. So yeah, we, it's a different level of appreciation. And we'd love to create some new memories out there in Dubai. So everybody out there, just bring all the energy that you have. We are going to have the most incredible time. I'm telling you, and you know, don't don't come in there uh, uh, with any inhibitions. You know, all of the trauma that you might be going through at home or at work. Leave all of that at the door because we want you to come in there with the pure heart and enjoy the pure music that we're going to be delivering. Word up. Thank you. Now, speaking of your music, um, at a time where a, a pop, pop music keeps on, I would say, um, go through evolution in a way. So, but what keeps you inspired to perform your classic hits after all these years? The people, yes, that's it. The, people, the people still love it, and and trust me, we don't we don't really know why, but it, but we 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 take it and we appreciate every moment that uh, we share with those people who paid their hard earned money, got dressed, burned some gas, and and spent money on expensive parking <laughs> and, and concession with expensive drinks and all of that. Just to sit, watch us sing a few songs. So yeah. it's the people. It really is. The people are, are, are what. Uh, keeps uh, our boys to men and our uh, music and our legacy alive. So that's really all it is, you guys. Yeah. You keep boys to men, boys to men. In. That's beautiful. So we are aware of the fa of your collaboration with Maria Carey. So how would you, how did the collaboration with Maria Carey on oh, one Mariah Carey. they come about? If you can just maybe give us an insight about that. I got you. Um, yeah, um, it was a, a situation where um, we actually, uh, the president of Sony Records at the time, which was Mariah Carey's husband, uh, was um, really felt like it would be a good idea for Boyz II Men and Mariah Carey to get together and do a song. And, you know, we being on tour, it was kind of like hard to get around to doing it. Um, but the schedule kind of permitted it. And we all ended up in the studio and we wrote the song. Um, we didn't have a relationship at the time. It was just, you know, two artists writing music together and singing a song which, uh, with the hope that it will be a beautiful record and people would love it. But as we started recording and hanging out a little bit, relationships built and and the song turned out even more special than, than we would have even expected just simply because we created a camaraderie and we started to connect as far as our, our creativity is concerned. And I mean, it was, it was amazing. I thought, I think it was really amazing because Nate had written um, a part to a song um, that he was p potentially writing for, you know, boys to men. And um, when the song started being produced, it was amazing how the song that he was writing actually went perfectly with the song that we actually started to write and and, and uh, uh, produce with Mariah Carey, so it was kind of separate serendipitous, you know what I'm saying? How it came together, it was something that you know. Again, with our career, we we try to take things uh, as as God you know puts it in front of us and and just run with it. So that's the best the best way we've been we've been around this long because of just that right there. But Mariah is awesome, man. She she she's the homie. That's very sweet to say, to be honest. You know, as well, I would like to ask you that at a time where people with different ethnicities and cultural backgrounds live together, how do you ensure your music resonates with audiences from different cultural backgrounds, including those in Dubai? Well, we don't actually. Uh... We don't conjure up a direction of where we're trying to, or a group of people we're trying to direct our music to. Um, for years, we've always called our music music for the people. Um, obviously, being Black artists in America, they tend to try to pigeonhole you in a certain way, but our music always kind of came out of that box where it's kind of had its own arms and its own, you know, remix. And we kind of was able to reach, you know, pretty much all people. So, um, other than the group's entity, 
our music was able to kind of stretch out that way to where we weren't pigeonholed to where our music could be presented to the whole world. Beautiful. So I want to now go to your last album. Are there any specific themes or messages in your last album that you're particularly excited to share with your Dubai audience? Are you talking about the Collide album? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, th- I think, you know, Collide was a step away from, I guess, what people, I think, would know us for. And we wanted to be a little more broad. We wanted to express a, a, a different type of... Uh, style that and that we've all uh had in us but never really had the the luxury of exploring it because in the industry when you reach a certain level of success people expect a certain thing from you and and it, it's it's a weird thing but with collide we we were allowed to kind of just do whatever we wanted and and we're influenced by a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of types of music, uh, different types outside of just R and B. We like, we like pop. We like rock. We like folk. We like, you know, all of those things. Hip hop, all of that. So we listen to all of it. So collide is just an amalgamation of all of those things, just put into our style and and, and what we uh, enjoy in our private time. And um, just giving people a different look. Just giving people a different um, uh, facet of who we are. Not just as, as musicians, but uh, creators and. and, and fans of music as well. Well, are there any particular songs that you believe resonate with the Dubai audience? Um, I think that it's going to be a lot of, a lot of songs that that, yeah. will, that will I mean, again, we 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 don't know what people normally expect from boys to men, but it's never what they expect. We never give them what they expect. We always try to make sure that you know on this roller coaster, you know, when, when you get up to the top, you know what I mean, you don't actually know when you're going to go all the way down. You know, we want we want the anticipation to be everything. Um, so it's just, you know, it's 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 going to be a journey. It's going to be a real, real fun journey. The visuals, the music, the vocals. I mean, we don't pull no punches when it comes to you know delivering a song to our fans and our friends. Um, we feel like if you bought a ticket, you bought a ticket for a reason. And we're not trying to be uh, um, have you walk away from the show feeling like, oh, uh, what the hell was that? You know what I'm saying? Or oh man, we didn't we they didn't do they didn't sing or they you know what I mean? We're not we're not the type of group that 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 don't care. You know, we care very much how people feel uh, when they leave a concert, leave a Boys to Men concert. It actually looms on our minds the whole night wondering how they took the concert until we see the posts and things like that. So, you know, it's 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 going to be a uh, it's going to be incredible. I I I'm I'm excited and I know that my fellows are excited as well. Yeah, we want we want to experience that beautiful place too. It's yeah. a beautiful place. So yeah. we're we looking forward to uh, just seeing the people and uh, scouring the countryside and seeing what's going on too. Well, we are actually very excited for that. So finally, I would like to ask, what are your hopes for the future of Boys to Men? Everything. Everything. The the, the sky is the limit at this, at this point. Um, yeah. We have, we've been around for 32 years. Um, and that right there, is is a feat it's 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 basically something that does not happen uh especially for groups of our generation you know um a lot of the groups that came up with us they they, they're not doing it to this level you know what i mean um they're going they're performing but they're not doing it at this level you know and it's just a testament of how hard we worked in the beginning and cultivated enough of the world so that the generations of those places that we've been to, they actually have grown with us and they've shared our music with their with their children. And it's just an amazing thing to know that 32 years later, we can still actually be here, here in London and on two sold out shows in London and on our way to Dubai to, you know, rock out for the people out there. 
We just want to get everybody out there, get those seats filled up, because when I look out in the audience, I don't want to see an empty space. You know what I mean? And neither does neither do my fellas. They don't want to. We don't want to look out there and be like, oh, okay, we. Are, I wish we would have sold out the left. You know, the the left three seats over there. We want every seat filled. That's really specific. It is. It that is, is okay. <laughs> well, we've reached the end of our interview. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our audience as well, you guys. Thanks again, once again, to Boys to Men Group. Don't forget to catch them at the Cola Arena to watch them perform. Oh, yay. Yay. Ah, yay. Thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Appreciate guys. it. What's the yeah. show? Thank you so much. Thank you. You should watch it live, hopefully. Thank Beautiful. Thank much love. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Yep, see you soon. Thank you.